It's springtime in New Orleans. The flowers are blooming. The sun is hot. Jazz Fest is in full swing. Well, sort of. It's kind of in place. But what is happening is art in bloom. Each year, garden clubs, floral designers, and creative talents from all over New Orleans come to the New Orleans Museum of Art to create spectacular floral designs to showcase the beauty of the season and to raise money to support the museum and several community gardens. I'm Brian Batt, and I'm here to explore this year's exhibits with you. The New Orleans Art Museum and the Garden Study Club of New Orleans have collaborated to put together this year's event, and they hope you're able to come out this weekend to see the show. Since not everyone can come in person this year, I'm here to lead you on a guided tour of the event so you won't miss out. Now, we're very thankful for our lead sponsor, Iberia Bank First Horizon, for helping us make this whole event possible. And since we've all been spending a lot of time at home this year, our designers were asked to build on the theme Homegrown, celebrating the beauty of creating at home. In addition to the floral displays, this year's event includes exhibits and speakers that showcase the amazing things you can make at home. So come on, let's art and bloom. Now we find ourselves in the Great Hall. Look at these beautiful urns designed by local talents, Leslie Massoni and my pal Pam Donjo, former owners of Uptown Flowers. Well, Pam and Leslie are cleaning up after they did these gorgeous, gorgeous topiary urns. Actually, they're two Grecian urns. If you know your music man history, there's a song about two Grecian urns. All right, let's go see some more. Movers and shakers. Each year, the Art and Bloom Committee invites local businesses and organizations to share their message using flowers and organic materials in the Movers and Shakers Gallery. Participants may choose to create their own floral displays or work with a professional florist or designer. These exhibitors represent some of our best homegrown businesses here in New Orleans. Behind me is the LCMC exhibit done by Urban Earth. But what I love is that it's representative of the logo and all these gorgeous flowers with the heart. Because that's what it's all about. You gotta have heart. Now, if you look closely, the, the attention to detail for all of Urban Earth's arrangements, are, it's amazing. They've taken uh, implements, you know, x-ray machines and lighting implements and done rays of hearts coming down to the logo. It's perfect. Since 1905, Dr. Tishner's products have been manufactured and sold by the Dr. G.H. Tishner's Antiseptic Company, located here in New Orleans. As one of our city's oldest business establishments, the company is now in its fourth generation of family management. Angle Events assisted them in creating a unique display highlighting their logo and signature colors. The team of florists at Robert Fresh Market plays with the idea of making groceries with this fantastic display using a grocery cart full of all of the essentials. Here we are at the Perlis exhibit, and this was done by the one and only Thibodeau florist, one of the oldest and best florists in the city. This rugby shirt, which is iconic of Perlis, is, is a masterpiece of paved flowers. It even has the little crawfish logo on it. I really think this is perfect if New Orleans ever decided to do a floral parade like the Rose Bowl. Here we are with Blaine Kern's Mardi Gras World exhibit. Uh, there's a lovely queen and a great purple, green, and gold Mardi Gras arrangement. Nothing says homegrown like Mardi Gras and Blaine Kern's Mardi Gras World. And she's a lovely queen. The Garden District Bookshop and the Chicory House, formerly known as Still Perkin, have brand new owners. This display celebrates the canopy of the Garden District and the blooms of learning, food, and culture that the new owners plan to feature as the two merge together in a fabulous bookshop and cafe. Jesus approves. Urban Earth has again created some magic with this wonderful display of the Rink, an iconic shopping center in the Garden District. We see a large 1884 roller skate covered in blooms and greens, tagged with the logos of the tenants at the rink. 
I'm here on the grand staircase of the museum. It's gorgeous, and I'm here with Robin Schwartz, who is the volunteer committee chair for Art and Bloom this year. Robin, there's so much beauty around us, so many great floral arrangements and installations by so many great artists, but um, what does this all benefit? So it benefits all the exhibition planning that happens here at NOMA, as well as a lot of educational initiatives. So really, all the things that we love and enjoy here at the museum are being benefited by the dollars that are raised by Art in Bloom this year. That is so great, and, and people can either watch us online or come to the event this yeah. weekend, right? Yeah, or indeed. Do both, right? Or do both, yeah. It's your choice. We hope to see you. Well, here we are entering the gallery of professional design. In this gallery, professional florists build displays based on the year's theme. Year after year, Art and Bloom attendees are amazed by the designer's creativity and imagination. This year's exhibits certainly don't fail to wow and, as always, underscore the remarkable homegrown talent that can be found in New Orleans. Art and Bloom is grateful to these designers for their continued support of the event and would also like to take this opportunity to thank all of the florists who have been with us over the years who are unable to participate and wish all well for continued success. Whenever you can, please support our homegrown floral magicians, current and past. Created by the staff of Longview House and Gardens, Amy Graham, Amanda Joseph, and Kelly Schroeder, this display, entitled Dreaming of Flowers and Walking in a Garden, is inspired by daily immersion in Longview's verdant gardens. This collaborative piece beckons you to visit soon and be taken away with the beauty of their remarkable gardens. This year, Longview is recognizing and building on 100 years of founders Edith and Edgar Stern's commitment to the New Orleans community. And then over here from Villeries, this wonderful spring assortment, it's, it's, it's beautiful, but also has vegetables. Um, so when it's done, we can make a salad. Villeries partnered with a crane operator at the port of New Orleans to collect this reclaimed wood from shipments from all over the world. Here's a display from Tina Turner, and I think she's simply the best. Uh, they're caterpillars on a butterfly uh, bench, the irony. And it's used, she uses all kinds of great flowers. Look at the orchids, huge elephant ears. Okay, come on, there's more. Erin Steen from Compass Point Events has created a design representative of her mindset during the early days of the COVID lockdown, when scarcity of materials necessitated drastic paring down of original floral design concepts. She recalls the wedding of a National Guardsman and an NOPD officer who decided to proceed with their spring 2020 wedding despite the COVID restrictions in place. Erin recalls it being a surreal occasion with only six people allowed to attend. Her elaborate floral designs had to be reworked to include just flowers from her garden. Yet the love and commitment demonstrated by the couple gave her hope that these values were symbolic for better days ahead for the world. Over here, oh my gosh, it's Tina Turner again. She is simply the best. Uh, this is from the plant gallery and it's, it's stunning. I, I just think, you know, this will be great on my dining room table. This is from Como's florist, and it uses all um, flowers and foliage we find here in South Louisiana. It's pretty stunning. And it's a very monochromatic with the greens. Green is a god color, I've so I've been told. So, we are gonna go to the Creative Gallery now. Here in the Creative Designs Gallery, we're celebrating New Orleans' dynamic community of makers. Local artists, designers, and entrepreneurs showcase their talents through botanical interpretations of what homegrown means to them. Look at this from Nola Flora. So many levels and, and it's so sim simple, but so elegant and evokes, I don't know, I think I'm in like a, a wild forest. And over here, we have from Glenda Ivy Designs, this wonderful, colorful uh, jardinier with two, two uh, aprons of beautiful flowers. Look at the amaranth. Amaranth is, 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 is rampant here at uh, Art and Bloom this year. Look at this, is this beautiful uh, purpley uh, fuchsia amaranth with roses. 
and all different kinds of flowers. And come over here, we get to see more amaranth. And I've never seen white amaranth before. But right here, we have a Stella Brule. Um, and her work is gorgeous. There's nothing like a white hydrangea. There's nothing like a white hydrangea. They're just gorgeous. And in this white urn, it's, it's very monochromatic and, and simply gorgeous. There's more. Okay, look how great everybody at, at Pilot and Powell, how the, their work is that it represents the floral pattern on the dress represented in flowers. See, flowers can say so much. And over here, we have Maria Eckend Millinery and um, with the camellia, which is, you know, in bloom all the time here. I just got a camellia bush and I love her. Can I put the hat on? I don't think it would be a good idea. <laughs> I was joking. Look, it's not gonna work out. Just, just call me, okay? Oh, come on. We're now making our way to the Tablescapes Gallery, where you will find inspiration from some of New Orleans' top style setters, displaying creativity through the art of tablescapes. Sued is a charming magazine street shop celebrating New Orleans' Sicilian history. Sicilians arrived as lemon merchants only to stay and forever change the way of life of their new home. Inseparable from the mythical past of their homeland, here is the king and queen as they preside over a table painted with Sicilian scenes set with a glorious feast. Kim Star Wise, another homegrown talent, helped them put together this beautiful exhibit. My chicken's a little overdone, but that's okay. This is the So Susu entry, and it's magnificent. Look at these huge, wonderful flowers made of, of moss and different, different blossoms, and even the purses and accessories are made with petals. Okay, you guys at So Susu have outdone yourself. Wow. Oh, do these come in my size? Another delightful shop on Magazine Street, Peony dreams of the Belle Epoque and the magic of Paris in the late 19th century. Their tablescape is inspired by the set designs of the Paris Opera, but with a magical, sparkly, whimsical peony twist. Furloughed Four is an entrepreneurial team of two sommeliers and two chefs who found themselves out of work during the pandemic. They started a catering business, providing private fine dining in people's homes, a truly homegrown idea during an unprecedented time. Their floral display is of Mother Nature decanting the spring and allowing it to breathe into summer. It's an example of the changing of the seasons set on a Furloughed Four fine dining tablescape. Okay, we're getting a sneak peek at a work in progress. This is from Elysian, the wonderful Elysian shop, and these wonderful tulipiers with all the vibrant colors of the Turkish flower, uh, the tulip. And you can see them all through the wonderful tapestries and silks and textiles. It's a truly perfect exhibit. I, I, I can't believe it. Look who is here. We have Kim Roddy and Brett LaPere, <laughs> the co-chairs of Art and Bloom. Tell us, how, how does this all happen, Brett? Well, this year, Art and Bloom is presented by Iberia Bank and First Horizon. The theme is homegrown to celebrate the beauty you can create at home. We are so excited to be celebrating both in person and online. Art and Bloom is a multi-day event. The museum is open this weekend, Friday through Sunday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. We have 72 different exhibitors and are so excited to showcase the talent of our community. We look forward to seeing everyone. So come to Art and Bloom and experience all the beauty of Art and Bloom, either here or online, but it's better here. St. Maria, what's the problem? I mean, come on. Get with the program. Start arranging your flowers. Here, out on the balcony, looking over the Great Hall, we find the talents of your young artists. Here is the McGee School uh, entry, and it's kind of fantastic. I think it's all paper mache. I personally love the Cheetos because I'm on a diet, and I really want some right now. Because, and also representative of the diet is the Faye yogurt. Ah, it's fantastic. Such talent, such imagination. And this is Lycée Francais de Nouvelle Orléans, and um, this all looks like wonderful clay projects. Uh, they're all different. I see leaves, I see skulls, I see... It looks like all different forms of nature and home. So I think it's a homegrown theme put to test. Okay, this is the Jefferson Parish School's Young Artist Talent Education Program. 
and they're just adorned it with all different kind of flowers. I see Mardi Gras float flowers, flowers made from uh, remnants of uh, packaging for food packaging, metal, cans, all different kinds of uh, flowers. What you can do with an imagination. This is making me very hungry, but I don't think it's edible. I mean, maybe you could smoke the baby's blood. Okay, this blew me away. All these sculptures on a theme from, the, from Newman School. They're fantastic, and, and if, um, if anybody wants to make a donation to the Brian Bat Fund, I really like this one the best. One of the most exciting parts of Art in Bloom is the interpretation of art by our local garden clubs. Each of our participating 16 garden clubs was assigned a piece of art here at the museum to interpret using plant material. The arrangements are then judged by an expert florist and first, second, and third place awards are given as well as those for best use of color, best use of plant material, and best in show. Here's the Garden Study Club entry, and it's quite stunning. I love, they're using some, some very beautiful and fancy flowers, like the, the beautiful aubergine lilies, but they also have basic eucalyptus and, and a simple Queen Anne's lace, and it really evokes the painting. Okay, how perfect is this junior league floral arrangement? How, how great does it represent this Kandinsky with all the, the circles and all the colors? It, it's just perfect representation. And come over here, here's another one. I love this one, how it, it's mainly just a, a color representation with, high, with the hydrangeas and the lilies and the, and the tulips. Simple, but it really evokes the painting behind us. People are talented. Okay, we are here now with Lynn Smith, who is president of the Garden Study Club. Take it away, Lynn. Thank you, Brian. Thank you to Noma and the City of New Orleans for allowing us to co-host Art and Bloom. It showcases the beauty of flowers while interpreting art. The funds raised by this event support the community gardens throughout New Orleans. We donate to public parks and gardens such as New Orleans Botanical Gardens, City Park, and Longview Home and Gardens, wellness homeless shelters, historic sites, local arborists whose trees help prevent erosion. This year, we're featuring lectures, virtual packages, as well as Back to Our Roots, which is a native plant exhibit. Our club wants to bring a new generation of ecologists and activists to see Art and Bloom this year. By using indigenous plants, we can help climate change, social justice, and drainage. Thank you. Up on the third floor of the museum, we find the Ikebana exhibit. Ikebana, the Japanese art of floral arrangement and display, has its origins in the 6th century AD, when monks offered flowers to Buddha at the temple. In the 14th to 16th century, unrelated to religious worship, flowers were arranged in vases, and much of what was to be viewed as traditional Ikebana and its canon of beauty was established. It has continued to evolve into very modern forms, but many of the older schools remain popular. Ikebana forms were originally composed of three main lines to symbolize the harmony between heaven, man, and earth. The artist strives to create a representation of the universe in a small container as a three-dimensional form. 
Today, there are thousands of schools of Igibana, and the organization Igibana International has over 165 chapters in 60 countries with 8,500 members. All right, here we are in the auction gallery, and there are, there's over 80 beautiful works of art, all different kinds of works of art, from Lisa Alpa's beautiful sculptured uh, candlesticks to this Dunbar three-dimensional piece, which is spectacular. The Elizabeth Locke earrings. Oh my gosh, come on, come see more. There's uh, my friend Gretchen Howard, this wonderful painting. I love her work, and the one and only Hunt Slonum. But this Hunt Slonum, has a little bit of sparkle to it. It's pink glitter. I think it's perfect for anybody's room. There's so much here, so make sure you bid. And remember, all the money that's raised goes to the museum and many community gardens in our beautiful city. And now let's go and talk to Andrew Lamar Hopkins, whose beautiful painting graced the cover of The Invitation. I love your painting. Thanks. It's Thanks. great. I guessed the title of it almost, didn't I? <laughs> you did. Right. What's the title? So the title is Creole Tea and Light Refreshments, mm -hmm. and it shows a um, Creole free woman of color having tea in her home. Wearing, uh, wearing upper length gloves, yes. right? <laughs> and I can see these must be little fancy pedophores from, you know, maybe Gambino's or some fancy bakery. <laughs> uh, and and um, so you're a self-taught artist. Yes, yes, I am. And, Tell me about um, that. You know, I've always, as a child, did art, mm -hmm. focused on art. Didn't know I would be an artist. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so I've always painted, but in my teens, I got into free people of color and Creoles of color, mm -hmm. which I think is a fascinating history that oh, yes. most people don't know about, no. and decided to kind of focus on telling their lifestyle well, through my art. And she's lovely, but also you've done a lot of detail to the architectural background of it. Tell yes. me about that. Yes, well, I wanted to be an architect uh, mm. when I was young, but I was not good at math, so <laughs> decided not to yeah. do that, yeah. but yeah. you can see architecture there's, comes out but in But there's the a lot of math here. Yes. I mean, look at the geometric <laughs> on, the, on the rug, the pink rug, and I love your use of color. It's, Thank you. It's very um, happy. Yes, pastel colors. Yeah, yes. yeah, it's great. Well, this painting can be yours because <laughs> it's in the auction, so bid and bid high for this gorgeous Gorgeous painting, thank you so much. Thank you, All thanks. Right. Andrew paints meticulous, lush, minute depictions of 19th century interior scenes and architectural set pieces based on the histories of free Creole people of color in the antebellum American South. In 2020, he mounted a solo presentation titled Creolite at Venus over Manhattan in New York, which received coverage in the Wall Street Journal, Art Forum, and New York Magazine, among other prominent publications. Hopkins lives and works between New Orleans, Louisiana, and Savannah, Georgia. I hope everyone enjoyed meeting with Andrew. His painting is one of many up for auctions. Now, to register, go to bidpal.net slash AIB. That's bidpal.net slash AIB. Remember that all proceeds not only go to our magnificent museum of art, but also many of our beautiful community gardens. Rain, nor sleet, nor snow will stop our wonderful landscapers here from making these wonderful displays outside. And this is Anthony's landscapers, and they're, they've come out in the rain to make sure it's beautiful for art and bloom. So come on out this weekend and see it. On behalf of the New Orleans Museum of Art and the Garden Study Club of New Orleans, we thank you for your support for Art and Bloom, sponsored by Iberia Bank and First Horizon. Thank you for coming and celebrating and all the beautiful talent we have here in New Orleans. It's truly homegrown. <laughs>